Hello friends, welcome to Constant Learners. Uh, in this video, we are continuing with support vector machine to solve classification problems. In the previous video, we have already discussed the purpose of support vector machine, how it works, how it classifies the data using a hyperplane. We discussed what is a hyperplane, what are support vectors, and we also saw linear a uh, separation or linear classification of data using the most optimal hyperplane. Today in this video we are discussing what is a soft margin, what is a hard margin. Then we are going to see the equation of hyperplane and the overall math in support vector machine. And if time permits we are also going to see the kernel functions for non-linear classification. Alright, so let's start with the soft and hard margin um, now see here we have uh, two classes a red class and the green class and the data is separated using this yellow line as the hyperplane right and these two orange lines are giving us our margin correct because that is the space between the two classes but if we observe we have a data point that is wrongly classified right this is the red class and this is a green data point that has been wrongly classified on the opposite side correct if i draw a hyperplane somewhere here right in between the green and red data points is it going to be the most optimal hyperplane no because the most optimal hyperplane is the one that allows maximum cushioning between the data points correct and this is not giving us any space or any margin or any cushioning between the two data points so what are we going to do we are going to continue considering this as our hyperplane correct and we are going to allow for this miscalculation okay we're going to allow this miscalculation this kind of classification that allows outliers is very common in support vector machine. And thus support vector machine is said to be robust to outliers. Correct? So such misclassifications are acceptable here. So this kind of margin is known as a soft margin. Alright? So soft margin is the one that allows outliers or miscalculations or we can say misclassifications. All right. It does not have to be excessive misclassification, but some data points here and there are acceptable. All right. So this kind of margin is a soft margin. Then hard margin is exactly the opposite of soft margin. We can see that here we have a green class and the red class. Right? And both the uh, data points are perfectly classified. Right? That means there are no outliers or no misclassification. Right? So this kind of margin, see, this margin has no misclassifications. So this kind of margin is known as a hard margin. Alright? I hope that soft and hard margin was clear. It's an easy concept. Now let's head to the equation of hyperplane in support vector machine and we'll also see how can we optimize the support vector machine. How can we get the optimal function? Alright, so here we have two classes. One is the negative class and the other one is the positive class. Alright, here we have the negative data points and the positive data points. Alright, now this purple line is our hyperplane all right and this is our boundary for uh, negative class and this is our boundary for the positive class all right now we know that equation of a line is y is equal to ax plus b so according to this equation we can write the equation of our hyperplane right all of these does not make any sense here in SVM, but based on this equation, we can write the equation of our hyperplane, right? So, equation of hyperplane becomes 
y is equal to w transpose x plus b. Alright, that means this line, this hyperbolic equation will become w transpose x plus b. And since it is in the center, it's going to be equal to 0. Okay, now here what are these, what is y, what is w transpose, what is x, what is b. So y is the classification label. Alright, it helps us to classify the data. W is the parameter of plane. Alright, then x is nothing but the test vector. Or a, we can say a test data point. All right, and B is the bias or offset. Now, here our hyperplane is not passing through the origin. But in case our hyperplane is passing through the origin, here suppose this is our hyperplane, then in this case the bias B is going to be equal to 0, right? But we need the most optimal hyperplane, so it doesn't matter whether our hyperplane is passing through the origin or no. Alright. We need our focus is the most optimal hyperplane. But if it passes through the origin, the value of B will be equal to 0. Okay. I hope that up until now everything was clear. Now, let's talk about these uh, boundaries. The boundary at the negative class and the boundary at the positive class. So, I'm going to take the same color as the data point. The equation of this boundary is going to be W transpose x plus b is equal to minus 1. Alright? Because all the data points here are negative. Okay? They are belonging to the negative class. Alright? And all the data points here are positive. So, the equation of this line is going to be w transpose x plus b is equal to Yes, of course, plus 1. Alright? And this equation of hyperplane is going to be equal to 0. Right? Towards that side, it is minus 1. Towards this side, it is plus 1. Alright? I hope this much was clear. Now, the value of y on this side is always going to be plus 1. Okay? And the value on this side for the negative data points, the value of y is always going to be minus 1. Okay? I hope that up until now everything was clear. Okay? Now see, if the equation of this line, that means this boundary is W transpose x plus b is equal to minus 1, then all the support vectors that is lying on this boundary will also have the equation W transpose x plus b is equal to minus 1. Right? So, all the data points lying beyond this boundary will be either equal to 1, uh, equal to minus 1 or less than minus 1. Right? They are going to be less than or equal to minus 1 because this is negative. Here, we have positive. So, if we are, if we are going beyond this point, they are all going to be either less than or equal to minus 1. So, we can say that all the data points on this side has the equation W transpose X plus B is less than or equal to minus 1. Correct? Similarly, if the equation of this boundary is W transpose X plus B equal to plus 1, then all the support vectors lying on this line will also have equation equal to W transpose X plus B is equal to plus 1. And thus, all the data points that will lie beyond this line will have equation W transpose X plus B. Now, this is equal to plus 1. So, beyond this, the vectors or the data points will have equation either greater than or equal to plus 1. That means they are all going to be positive. Correct? So, they are going to be either equal to plus 1 or greater than plus 1. Okay? I hope that this much was 
clear to you. Alright, now let's say that we have a data point. Let's take this color. We have a data point here and it is x1. Okay, another data point here is x2. They are support like this, right? They are lying on the boundary. Now, if I draw a perpendicular to the hyperplane from both of these data points, okay? So, this is a perpendicular and this is also a perpendicular, correct? Now, if I want to find out this distance, how can we find the distance between two points? Distance between two points is equal to the uh, subtraction of the two points, right? We can denote it as x1 minus x2, correct? This is the distance between the two points. Now, we know that whenever this distance or this margin is maximum, then we get the most optimal hyperplane. The whole concept behind support vector machine is to increase this distance to get the maximum distance between the two classes because the more the distance the better will be the classification between the uh, data right so the data can be far far better classified if this distance is maximum now let's uh, find out the distance between these two points that is x1 and x2 right we know that any point any data point lying on this line will have equation as w transpose x plus b equal to plus 1. So, for x1, our equation will become w transpose x1 plus b is equal to plus 1. Correct? And for this x2, we know that the equation of any point lying on this boundary is w transpose x plus b is equal to minus 1. So, here we will get W transpose X2 plus B is equal to minus 1. Now, to get X1 minus X2, we can just subtract these two equations, right? We are taking the difference between these two equations. Correct? So, here what will we get? Let's take W transpose as common. So, we get X1. Now, this is positive, but with the negative sign, it will become minus X2. This will become, this positive will become negative. So, both of these will cancel. And this negative will become positive. So, here we will get 2. Correct? Now, this x is a vector quantity. This w is also a vector quantity. Vector quantity means what? It has both magnitude as well as direction. Correct? So, since this is a vector, we cannot move it to right hand side. We need the value of x1 minus x2. So, for that we need to get rid of this vector. But we cannot, uh, sorry, this w. But we cannot get rid of the w transpose because it is a vector quantity. Along with magnitude, it also has direction. So, we cannot get rid of the direction here. So, what are we going to do? We are going to divide both these sides by magnitude of w. Correct? So, what do we get here? w transpose divided by w multiplied by x1 minus x2 is equal to 2 divided by w. Alright? Now, here in this side, on this side, the magnitude of w will cancel. Only the direction will stay. Alright? Now, we know that to get the most optimal hyperplane, we need to maximize the distance between x1 and x2, right? When are we going to get the maximum distance between x1 and x2? When we have the most optimal hyperplane, correct? So, now can we say that this is our optimization function, right? Because this is, when this is maximum, we will get the most optimal hyperplane that will be the most optimized support vector machine, correct? So, this is our optimization function. But then there is a condition for optimization function, right? What is the condition for this to be our optimization function? There is a condition. 
And what is that condition? That whenever we consider these data points, the negative data points, right? For that, y should always be equal to minus 1, okay? And the value of the data points, that is w transpose x plus b, should be less than or equal to minus 1. Because here, on this boundary, they are equal to minus 1, right? The data points, the support vectors on this boundary are equal to minus 1. So, of course, beyond this, they are going to be less than, either equal to or less than minus 1, right? And the other condition for the positive points is that y is equal to plus 1 when, when w transpose x plus b is greater than or equal to plus 1. That means for the positive point, since this equation for the support vectors here is w transpose x plus b is equal to plus 1, then all the points beyond this line are going to be either equal to or greater than plus 1. And in that case, our y is going to be equal to plus 1. Alright? So, can we write this optimization function as can we combine these, both these conditions here? See, here for the negative points, if, if I write this as yi, that means for all the data points, multiplied by w transpose xi, that means for all the data points, plus p. Okay, suppose this is our equation here. Okay, now for all the negative points, y is negative, correct? And W transpose X plus B is less than or equal to minus 1. That is, this is also going to be negative. When we multiply negative and negative, we get positive. Correct? For this one, Y is plus 1. That is, it is positive. And this is greater than or equal to plus 1. That means this is also going to be positive. So, positive, positive becomes positive. Correct? So, here... This equation is always positive, no matter whether it is for negative data points or for positive data points. So, can we write our optimization function as yi multiplied by w transpose xi plus b. Now, since it is always positive and it is 1, it is 1, it is definitely 1. But it could also be greater than 1. So, we can write it as greater than or equal to plus 1. Correct? So, this becomes our optimization function. That means for any point, whether it is positive or negative, doesn't matter. This equation should hold true for, true for both positive points as well as for negative points. It's not going to become minus 1 for negative points. No. This is our generalized equation. Okay. Generalized equation for optimization function. And this is always going to be true for both positive and negative points if they have to be perfectly classified. If this equation holds true, that means every data point is properly classified. The positive points are going in the positive class. The negative points are going in the negative class. Alright. And that means there are no misclassifications or no outliers. I hope that this much was clear. If you have any queries, please write them down in the comment section below. I will make sure to respond to your queries. If something is not clear, I'll try and explain it again. And if you've liked this video, if you've got the... A concept behind support vector machine give it a thumbs up we will continue with the kernel functions in the next video thank you so much share it with your friends subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching